Hi, I'm Adam McFarland with the University of Michigan SURE Program 2012. And today, I'm going to show you about my research project, Atom Probe Tomography of Vitreous Ice. We use a machine called a Local Electrode Atom Probe, or LEAP for short. It can take a sample, and by using either a voltage pulse or a laser pulse, it adds enough energy to send off individual atoms into a detector. What it uses is these finely pointed samples because the electric field and energy at the apex of the point becomes extremely concentrated, allowing for enough energy for this to happen. So if we take a sample and blow it up like this into a point, it has all these atoms at the top and all throughout it. You add some energy and that allows the atoms to be sent off with a radial projection from a single point into a position sensitive detector. What the detector then does is calculates the time in between the pulse of energy and the atom impact, and it uses that time to determine the mass to charge ratio. All atoms have different mass to charge ratios, so you end up getting a mass to charge ratio graph that would look like this, for example. Each one of these points corresponds to different atoms, and on this axis you have the number of them. We then use computer software to reconstruct this data into 3D models of what the atoms in the sample actually look like. Since atom probe tomography is still such new technology, there are still some major drawbacks. The most prominent being that in order to use a sample it has to be in a finely pointed needle shape with a radius at the apex of less than 100 nanometers. New techniques are being developed constantly to look at new types of materials. Recent developments include looking at ceramics, semiconductors, and now we're looking at how to do the same with ice. We don't want to look at the molecules in ice itself but rather we hope to embed nanoparticles within the ice so that we can study their structure on an atomic level. This hasn't been done before and could be a great advancement in the field of microscopy. Let's see how we go about doing that. We start by taking a small piece of tungsten wire. Tungsten is chosen because it's already easy to work with in the atom probe and we know what its structure looks like. start by electropolishing our tungsten wire in a sodium hydroxide solution until it's a fine point. Then an oxide layer is created using either high voltage or high temperature, upwards of 800 degrees Celsius. The oxide layer is spongy and porous, which allows water to easily adhere to the surface of our tungsten substrate. The sample holder is placed in the prep station and the entire thing is cooled using liquid nitrogen. We add a few drops of water to our substrate and then shake off the excess so that a thin layer is formed at the top. We then plunge freeze in liquid ethane and transfer quickly to liquid nitrogen where the sample is shielded from ambient atmosphere and frost contamination. We then pull the sample into a transfer arm which is also cooled using liquid nitrogen. It is then attached to the leap and moved into the analysis chamber. The entire time the sample must be kept cool so that the ice doesn't melt and so that particles don't degas into the vacuum chamber. The sample is transferred into the analysis chamber and must be precisely aligned with the local electrode so that ions hit the target correctly. 
We power on the laser, which will give the ions enough energy to leave the substrate itself. And from that, we take a sample and turn it into this, where the tungsten ions are represented by maize and the water molecules are represented in blue. Now all we need are some nanoparticles.